Alright, so this video is going to be a basic uh, from the ground up type of introduction to chemical bonding theories. So the three main chemical bonding theories uh, that we use in general or even organic chemistry are Lewis theory, valence bond theory, and molecular orbital theory. These theories, uh, all three of them have similarities and differences with one another and um, we'll talk about those differences a little later but these are the main three theories and uh, but for now what I'd like to do is I'd like to start by talking about the reason why chemical bonds form uh, in general so basically I'm going to go over some underlying information that basically uh, encompasses uh, all three of these different uh, chemical bonding theories so to start with you know, we're going to answer the question, you know, why do chemical uh, bonds form in general? What makes them form? So the answer to that is, uh, is that bonding lowers the potential energy, which we call E, between the charged particles that make up atoms, which of course are the protons and the neutrons, positive and negative respectively. Uh, if, you re if you think back to uh, when you learned about Coulomb's law, maybe you ha you've never even learned about Coulomb's law before, but if you haven't, it's really not that bad. Basically, what Coulomb's law is, is it's a way to uh, get an expression for the potential energy of two charged particles. So, the Coulomb's law equation is E is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, which this whole term, the 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, this whole term is a positive constant. So it's really not an important part of the right-hand side of the equation. The important part of the right-hand side of the equation is the Q1 times Q2 over R. So E, as we already said, is the uh, total potential energy of the two particles. Uh, Q1 and Q2 are the respective charges of particles 1 and 2. And R is the distance between those two particles. So, uh, how does this apply to uh, atoms? Well, if you, you know, you probably know by now that atoms have uh, positively charged nuclei and negatively charged electron clouds. Um, that's really not a newsflash to anybody. So basically, what's going on is, you know, the nucleus of one atom may be attracted to the electrons of the other atom. So you have nuclei attracted to electrons, you have electrons repelling one another, but then you also have nuclei repelling one another. And uh, this can manifest itself in several different ways to form several different types of chemical bonds that, uh, that I'll go over in the coming videos. So uh, basically, uh, these Coulombic uh, attractions can basically mani manifest themselves in three different ways and those three different ways basically represent the different kinds of bonding that we've learned about. So these are ionic, covalent, and metallic bonding. So I'm not really going to go over each of these in detail. I do have a video on ionic and covalent bonding and if you want to understand that a little bit better you might want to check it out. It, it could be useful. So let's just uh, go over them briefly. So ionic bonds, uh, those occur between metals and nonmetals. And usually the metal forms a cation, a positively charged ion, and the nonmetal forms an anion or a negatively charged ion. And uh, there exist these electrostatic interactions between cations and anions uh, that we call uh, ionic bonds, and it forms, uh, uh, it forms lattices. So we have ionic bond that occurs between metals and nonmetals. We also have covalent bonding, which occurs between a nonmetal and another nonmetal. And remember, when we have covalent bonding, we have sharing of electrons. So one, one uh, atom is not donating an electron to the other. They're actually sharing uh, electrons with each other. So covalent bonding actually produces these discrete units that we call molecules. So ionic lattices, covalent uh, bonding, we have these molecules. And uh, the third type that you may not be too familiar with uh, is metallic bonding. And we don't, you know, in general chemistry, we don't go over this uh, too much. Um, you mainly learn about that in inorganic chemistry, and you usually don't take inorganic chemistry unless you're a chemistry major. So, metallic bonding uh, is basically uh, the basic theory behind metallic bonding is uh, metals in general have pretty low ionization energies, so uh, they readily give up their electrons. And anytime you have a metal that forms a, you know, a lattice or some kind of amorphous solid or something like that, 
the the metals tend to you know rel relinquish their electrons and in, into like this sea of electrons that is delocalized over the whole lattice. So that's basically what metallic bonding is. It's just another manifestation of you know the Coulombic attractions between charged particles. So now that we've talked about uh, the types of bonding and the origin of bonding, let's return back to the uh, the three chemical bonding theories: Lewis theory, uh, valence bond theory, and molecular orbital theory. So each one of these uh, these bonding theories is useful uh, in its own right. Um, it it pretty much just depends on uh, you know what what properties you're trying to predict or describe. So it, it, for instance, if I wanted to figure out the molecular formula for uh, you know, a compound that is only composed of oxygen and hydrogen, uh, then Lewis theory would be very uh, useful for that. Um, if I wanted to figure out uh, the shape of a water molecule, uh, valence bond theory would be quite useful for that. Um, if, I, if I wanted to figure out something a little bit more advanced, for instance, uh, you know, why uh, diatomic oxygen is magnetic, then I would, uh, I would start using molecular orbital theory. So. The biggest tip I can give when you're using these uh, chemical bonding theories is that just if you think about what theories are, the theories in the models, uh, you know, the you know, electron distribution models and molecular shapes and stuff like that, theories and models help us explain and predict behavior. They're not right or wrong. None of these uh, bonding theories is necessarily better than the other one, but either they're useful or not useful. It all just depends on which uh, behavior, which properties you're trying to predict or explain. So, um, you know, no, another thing is that is that you know, the, the electron model is, is the is the effect. It's not the cause. The electron, you know, the, the bonding theory does not cause the electron distribution to to do anything differently than what it was before. Uh, basically, what what the way it works is molecules are what they are, and the models just help to describe them, so they're meant to describe things. So, hopefully, uh, that has you know helped out with your understanding of chemical bonding theories. Um, so, in the coming videos, I will uh, I'll post different uh, videos concerned with all three of these bonding theories. So, all right, have a good one.